Welcome to the Business Legends Podcast, where we interview business leaders and entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their successes, become inspired, and meet the people that make change happen. I'm the host of the show, Reese Ron, along with my co-host, the greatest co-host in all the land, Christian Webb. Say hello to the people. Hello, hello. Whoop. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, this never happened before, I swear. Don't be talking about my microphone. Today, we are accompanied by Mr. Robert Hackney, the, the grand mastermind, uh, ultimate entrepreneur behind Charlotte Business Group, Smooth Monkey, and the third one is Securance. Securance. Yes, I almost, I almost got it in one. But we're going to go here, gentlemen. Yeah, yep. very good. Robert, thank you so much for joining us this morning and putting up with us so far. <laughs> you know, it's been fun. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the two of you, for having me. Looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, let's get on to business. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. So um, let's start with. Well, let's let's uh, start by telling our listeners what each of these businesses are. So most of our listeners probably know what Shot Business Group is, um, but just give us a brief summary of each, and then we'll dig into them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Charlotte Business Group, I really, say it's a professional network here in Charlotte. Uh, it's also it's a kind of alliance of small to mid-sized businesses as well, uh, which we host you know events, opportunities, um, uh, you know, to, for everyone to kind of connect in person, but also virtually as well, and so. Uh, we also have a Charleston business group, a Raleigh business group, and we oh, also wow. have kind of like chap- uh, surrounding chapters, Lake Norman, Lake mm-hmm. Wiley, uh, Mint Hill, Ballantyne, and, uh, and University also. Um, we have Smooth Monkey. So Smooth Monkey was started. We just turned five uh, <laughs> April, <laughs> April, sec- April 2nd of this year. Uh, flagship store is in Plaza Midwood on the corner of Commonwealth and Pecan. And uh, we also have a, a location in Atrium Hospital. Uh, Pineville Sports Complex, and then a food truck. But uh, Smooth Monkey, it's a, a kind of all-natural uh, smoothie and acai uh, company, and so it's... It, you said it was like a cooler Smoothie King, right? It is. <laughs> a, cool, a cooler and tastier Smoothie King, yep. yes, yes. I like that, I like that. So, uh, no, but it's been a lot of fun, and um, and then Securance Financial, uh, so it's risk management planning, uh, life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care annuities, Um so insurance-based planning, mm-hmm. and somehow between all of that, you've mm-hmm. still made time to appear on Business Legends. So how have you done that? How do you how do you manage your time that well? I feel like I need to I need to learn things from you. No, it's well. At, to me, I I'm always learning, and at, 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 it's nothing. It's something that I've not quite. You know, I think it's I'm always learning and trying to master my time, mm-hmm. um, and, and find balance mm-hmm. because you know very early on, you know there was no balance. It was all you know. Work, work, all hands on deck, work, 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 and uh, just you know that was the price you know you had to pay or I had to pay, and so now it's trying to you know now that I'm able to breathe, it's like okay, where do I want to allocate my time? Where can I allocate my time? How can I have a little bit you know a little bit of fun, me time, and those kind of things as well? So it's I don't have the answer yet, but when I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> let me know. It's, yeah. it'll, it'll be it'll be your second round. <laughs> I, mean, I, I feel like people forget that it's more about allocating, like it's the time plus you've built, you've done all the you've done all the trekking. To make yeah. the finances. Yeah. So now you had you can also allocate finances to hire good people to take on responsibilities you used to drown in. So <laughs> the right people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, I think that's the sure. other challenge is, I mean, it took me, you know, even for, for Charlotte Business Group, our chief operations officer took us like three and a half, four years to find the right person for wow. that for that role. And it was just, you know, churning and burning, you know, or not even churning and burning, but just like, Finding people that wanted that you know wanted to work, but that, okay, was it a right fit? You know, mm-hmm. and it just was like you know going through that process of okay, identifying you know me even identifying okay, is this going to work? You know, can we make this work? And so it's just uh, that's a process in itself is hiring the right people for the yeah. right roles. What yeah. was there anything you said? You know, you're going, you're churning and burning, kind of learning learning the position and crafting the position for the right person while finding the right person. Um, you know, can you think of anything particularly that? You know, let's say three and a half years ago, you would have known something about a hiring criterion, or maybe even a interview question, or something like that. Like, is can you think of the, about anything that would have helped you three and a half years ago um, make a decision? You know, people there people want to be good at things, and it's just you know, just because someone wants to be good at it doesn't mean that's going to translate into them being able to do the job. And I sure. think that's that that can kind of there's pride, you know, there's you know. Um, there's a lot of things, but I think I don't. I think it's just it was just me just getting better, honing my skills as a you know as a leader, you know, in those in these new roles, this new business that was being created. Um, so I don't think it's any one thing. I think it's just you know experience. Sure. And it's one thing that it, you got to kind of go through the fire in order to kind of figure it out. And yeah. 
Um, Sounds yeah. like you're trying not to say that you just have to base people's experiences on their on and make it actually reality. Like if you're not good at operations, then you should not be a CEO. <laughs> yeah, in an operational role. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Wait, or even people like that had you know a extremely highly credible you know resume and just like they had previous experiences doing something similar. It's just like you know. Um, yeah, these are live bullets. I mean, this is you know, this is this is the real deal, and yeah. you know, not sure kind of you know, it it wasn't a cookie cutter you know transition from where they were previously you know to to the new role mm -hmm. you know where they were then, and so mm -hmm. it's just uh, uh, definitely definitely time for sure. Do you feel like the role was mapped out by you already, or do you feel like you were wanting a go getter that also had the experience to create the SOP as well, like to create the position? A little bit of both, you know, because uh, I mean, I feel like you know the position you know positions were you know. We're there, and but it's at the same time. It's like you know we weren't, uh, you know we we're still still small enough to be mm -hmm. fluid, flexible. I think that was the you know the you know one of the biggest parts of the positions was that you know we're, you know we can go for you know uh, take risks. You know we can do things that you know larger companies can't. And so it's just like was you know looking for someone who, um, you know has that, uh, that you know just that that mindset mm -hmm. to you know to want to like you know push the envelope. Um, you know, trying new things, you know, really just push, you know, pedal to the metal with, with the opportunity, with the position and uh, the, true, the true opportunity. Yeah. So when did your insurance company start? So insurance company started, we started about eight years ago, or it was really eight, eight and a half years ago. Eight years ago. And so having that. You did like three and three years almost. You went from, you went from insurance to CBG and then two years later, the, the Smooth Monkey company. Yeah, so yeah. You, okay. Yeah, we're we're behind. We need to get our yeah. stuff together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so it's crazy. That's how the whole thing started was with Securance. And so, you know, having this in, uh, insurance brokerage and that, and then I needed, no one wants to talk like, no one wants to talk to an insurance guy like a sharp stick in the eye, right? So mm -hmm. it's just like, I had to come up with, <laughs> you know, That's I mean, great. so I had to, I had to come up with like a, a vehicle mm -hmm. to position myself and all in the same time provide upfront value to my clients, to my prospects, to the community. And so that's kind of where the whole concept of CBG and Charlotte mm -hmm. Business Group really started because I could I could lead with Charlotte Business Group. I could lead with the network. I could lead with That was uh, so smart. We had thought mm -hmm. about it. We just never executed on it. Mm -hmm. Well and that's the thing, it's like, you know, I, I've had so many people say, Well, oh, a networking organization or I'm gonna start one up myself and it's just like, you know, I think sometimes people think that I would just waved a magic wand and That's like, you know, yeah. yeah, and it's like it magically appeared and it's just like I mean it was a uh, definitely a grind. And even with that, it's just like, you know, all my time, you know, n you know, neglecting family and events mm -hmm. and just like and then, you know, having family and, and friends just say, What are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, a networking organization really it's just like, you know, it's just all the stuff that kinda comes with you know all the naysayers all the mm -hmm. naysayers and just like and then you know it's the it's, you know the, the the usual roller coaster and the real so. emotion of your family going where are you at yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. that's the one that really matters you know um, yeah and, screw uh, the naysayers but the the where are you at's kind of that hurts yeah mm -hmm. it's just like really it's like you know so it's just um but you know uh it you know it's you know it, it so how did it go after you made after you got, that, <laughs> after you got the group did, go? <laughs> did the insurance company really grow yeah yeah so the insurance started growing and so um and it, I mean, it, that's when it really became a full plate for me. And so that's when I really needed to, because it was just a side hustle hobby and it started, it turned into a company. And so it's like, I need to find people to, you know, replace my roles because well, I was washing the dishes, you know, waiting the tables, cook, you know, cooking the food in the back. I was doing everything right. Yeah. And so um, finding the right people to, um, to plug in so I could remove myself from, you know, the, the daily and the mm -hmm. uh, daily routines. And so, um, so yeah, the network started thriving, insurance started thriving, and then that's when Smooth Monkey. So reached uh, Rob Nixon reached out to me owns a few restaurants here in Charlotte. So hey, listen, I see what you're doing with Charlotte Business Group. Would love to you know buy you lunch, connect with you, and then within like a few hours, we kind of really just hit it off. And he's mm -hmm. like, listen, I want to start up a smoothie company, and there was no smoothie presence. I mean, there was a Rico's Acai that had a food truck ar around the corner, but no brick and mortar presence, and mm -hmm. so. That's how that opportunity happened as well. And six months later, we opened Smooth Monkey in Plaza. And that's like, I can't imagine us, you know, trying to open that up, you know, now. Mm -hmm. And to make that, make through, make, uh, you know, for Smooth Monkey to make it through COVID, you know, it's pretty, I was just pretty, thinking pretty, about pretty, that. pretty, pretty remarkable. And that's, you know, big shout out to, to Nick, Rob Nixon. So it's, uh, he, uh, he was all hands on deck. You yeah, suppose those are pretty. Uh, they're, they're, I just, I, I'm actually, I met with somebody who's opening a company, uh, opening a smoothie company in, uh, Cornelius. Yeah. Um, and he was telling me the upfit is pretty outrageous. Like, it's like, first, what you would think it would be cheaper. Uh, he said it was like 300K to upfit a small building. 
Um, well, I mean, so I mean, I'm not sure how big theirs is, but I mean, it, it, ours is about roughly about 1,500 square feet. I'd say about the same. Yeah, max. And so, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, we we started off. I mean, the first location, and we went to Restaurant Depot. You know, grabbed. You know, mm-hmm. used used freezers. You know, used fridge. I mean, we it was a shoestring budget for sure. Okay. Um, and so, but you know, even with this, but this, with that business model. I mean, one of the biggest things with restaurants is that, you know, food costs, food waste, and those kind of things mm-hmm. as well, whereas ours is minimal. We buy the fresh fruit, all the fresh fruit, any fresh fruit that's not used in um, the acai bowls is then frozen for the smoothies, and so there's minimal waste. That's good. And so it's just, uh, but and they're tasty too, so it's, yeah, a, that's, yeah. that's even better. It's a win-win for it's everybody. Win, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I find myself watching, like, the Gordon Ramsay Kitchen Nightmares shows and <laughs> stuff like that, and... He's always talking about, well, particularly the food waste, like that it's just such a restaurant killer in general because there's so many restaurants that just have like, you know, leftover stuff that they just can't use because they didn't organize. Because like you said, a lot of restaurant owners are trying to seat the people and run the menus and and wait the tables and cook the food. And I feel like that company's coming in at such a great time too, though, because I feel like people are getting bored of the smoothie king operation. Yeah. You walk in and you get like fresh stuff thrown in your stuff. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it it's doesn't a look pump very, of like, you know, yeah. and it's like <laughs> sugar chunky, syrup chunky brown bananas and right. purple gooey strawberries and yeah. like some extra little <laughs> chemicals. And I don't know. It just seems. Let's uh, stop talking about Not that. exactly <laughs> right. And then they, they like, because you're what you built, literally one of those popped up in Burkdale. Yeah. And it's busy. Like, out, out, literally, there's a line out the door every single day. Yeah. Um, and I think there, I think people are wanting like a, a, a closer connection to actual like physical fruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah. Like the item itself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's I think it's a good play. Yeah. Well, on top of that, you know, you mentioned kind of you're just, you're just people and just uh, you know one of the things that's I mean it, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, it takes you know five or six people to run a store. You mm-hmm. know, and so whereas it's you know these larger shops, it's like you know it takes you know 10, 20 people you know to you know to run a shop, and so mm-hmm. it's just very you know very efficient. So that's good stuff, man. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, so. I want to talk a little bit about about uh, Smooth Monkey here. So you know this opportunity comes about, and you know you sit down with somebody. And how how did you know him before? He just yeah, so he, he really, really he, he reached out me. He found, he noticed me through uh, Charlotte Business Group. I had I think I'd started Charlotte Business Group. Charlotte Business Group had been going on for about nine months. Okay, or eight or nine months, and so that's kind of how he connected with me. And so, and Rob had you know twenty five years of you know restaurant experience, and so you know I was really kind of uh, wanted to get to know him as well his network and um and what he's done mm-hmm. and so yeah we we kind of hit it off and there was an empty space next door because uh, he owns jack love jack's mm-hmm. peculiar rabbit mm-hmm. oh, and peculiar uh, rabbit's still there uh well no i take the back so the, uh it's he still owns the building but uh well, I say, but we used to go to peculiar rabbit all, all the time, time. Yeah. yeah we love yeah. that spot mm-hmm. when it was oh, like, the yeah. roof the rooftop yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. it had two three we'll floors, tell you a right? story we'll tell you some stories off air <laughs> <laughs> it had three floors right yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i remember that place um and then uh no and so he you know was empty space next door he's like i want to start a uh, smoothie and acai company he, he had already picked out the name um he wanted to call it smooth monkey and uh I was like, man, I was like, he's just like, I'm looking for another business partner too. I was like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. it was kind of like, you know, uh, just seeing his vision, I was like, okay, this guy gets it. And, uh, you know, I knew based on my network and mm-hmm. CBG's uh, social media presence had started to really kick up and build up. And I was like, you know, we can uh, we can do this thing and make it work. And so, um, you know, just going through the process of, you know, uh, logos, you know, developing recipes for the smoothies and the acai, it's just like, Definitely a longer, pre- uh, you know, process than uh, I was I was expecting. So mm-hmm. actually, just, it's funny. Like it's like you stumbled upon a. Uh, it's like you started something. It's, I know it's been done in the past, but like your CBG. Yeah. Um, that model of building notoriety or not notoriety, but building building fame and uh, people knowing you or whatever um, inside of a business development group or inside of just like something you're good at, like influencing, growing a presence, whatever, uh-huh. and then building businesses around that. That's like a that's like a re- like kind of recent phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Like Taylor Swift did it. You got some big stars that have done it. Literally open. <laughs> he just like, compared you to Taylor Swift. How do you feel about that? <laughs> who's, that, <laughs> who's, that who's that lady who uh, who had the lipstick on stage at the Super Bowl and and literally she's a two billion she has a two billion dollar makeup company now. Mm. Either way, she was a famous artist and she literally just pulled out her new brand of lipstick. Oh, Rihanna. On, Rihanna. Rihanna on stage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. two billion dollar went viral. Two billion dollar yeah. e-commerce company mm-hmm. like that. Yep. 
It took one minute. Yeah, it's the power of the internet. And it's because yeah. they—it's ha- because they had the focus, right? Right. Mm-hmm. CBG is your focus. Right. So you're able to create anything around it as long as it's organic and not not terrible, right? Like you have to it has to really be you, not just some fake stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, that and I think that's it speaks like the brands that you know associate you know with you know the businesses that do associate with CBG and just that you know it comes. I don't know. It's. CBG is still kind of that you know, that in person networking, mm-hmm. but we you know, we do have the social media presence, the email distribution list, um, but it's just one of those things where you know I completely agree. It's it's all about if you can you know, develop the platform, mm-hmm. um, you know to you know to really showcase product services. It's like well, the sky's the limit. Yeah. So that's why I get, start promoting you guys. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Right away. Right away. I, I can't promise a two billion, you know, uh, you know, two billion, uh, two billion dollar lipstick. Two billion lipstick. Yeah, oh, but, we'll sell but. two billion, man. We're we're not greedy like that. Um, so when you when you sat down with him, just out of curiosity. By the way, I don't know if you remember this or not. When we were in the kickball, this is like one of those random comments. When we did that kickball league, mm-hmm. um, we had that party uh, with him. So oh, we met it? him at the thing. That was a long time. It was like five years ago. Anyway, we met him a long time ago. Okay. Is, the, is the is the point here? Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, so when y'all sat down developing recipes, you saw his vision and things like that. I mean, did you guys discuss numbers at all? I'm, I'm looking into like what was your because you barely know him, right? Right. Like you sit down with him, and did he approach you with the intent of like of like I think I can you know with this guy's network I can create something good? Like did he approach you with that idea or did it just come out of conversation? Well, I think he kind of had ideas as far as who he wanted to kind of bring on, and sure. I think with you know with what I'd created with CBG, it's like okay, it kind of fit the mold of mm-hmm. what he was what he was looking for, but. I mean, really, the fr- we were just wanted to have just one store. You mm-hmm. know, it was just that's kind of really what the uh, I mean, get the one store. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's sort of make uh, make make sure that it survives. You know, mm-hmm. and then uh, like the new and more opportunities have kind of presented themselves. And so, um, to be really have it uh, and grow it from the ground level, mm-hmm. uh, you know, eventually, and the the idea is to to franchise it. Um, but uh, but it, you know, it's it was, it was one of those things where we're focused on the first store, mm-hmm. and then just figure the rest out from there so yeah I, mean, I think it was important that uh, we you know we didn't have too big of goals so it was just you know yeah well, keeping yeah. the one store float. when you get ready to franchise I got somebody with a lot of experience in yeah. that my buddy uh, Rich Moyer you know him oh yeah I yeah, know, you know I was him. Say, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, franchise hopping. hopping and yep. went through the whole process and yeah. he's crushing it like mm-hmm. he's doing real well he stumbled over a couple blocks and he found his way and now he's just like yeah doing great yeah <laughs> he's a two time business legend he's been on the show twice so. okay. <laughs> he's, he's a, a baby one by the few. way he is, a, he is a baby, uh, yep. a baby uh, like two months old now mm-hmm. two I saw that yeah yeah good good old Rich we'll have to we'll have to give him a buzz here um well, it's incredible, Robert. I mean, you you have uh, you have multiple different things going on at, at any given time. And now, now, out of your three, which one's your favorite? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, well, CBG, it's like you know, um, really. I mean, to me, like just so many, so many. I've created so many opportunities for other people mm-hmm. um, for CBG, and I feel like that's what you know um, just ties the whole thing together. Like yeah. you know, with just business and opportunity and experiences that would never have been possible not only not only for myself but just for the other people Mm -hmm. involved and the members and just everything um and it's just like to create something that special and uh but for other people yeah and to be able to you know impact the community the way that it has Mm -hmm. it's just uh you know all from you know just doodling on a back of a bar napkin Mm -hmm. It's um. I, mean, I, w- I, I would have guessed. I would have guessed that for you. Yeah, because I would have like, too. Nobody actually. ever says. Nobody's ever said insurance was sexy. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Damn. And, and then smoothie is Damn. like filling stomachs. <laughs> right. And CB, CBG <laughs> has created like so many beautiful opportunities for you. Yeah. Like you've probably met the world yeah. by now. He's you probably know everybody. He just in said Charlotte. like the most offensive thing in the least offensive oh, way knows. possible. <laughs> yeah. Like, he knows yeah. I'm right. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. yeah. For sure. But yeah. he ain't, he ain't wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But no, it, it's the truth. It's just like you know, and 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 my hope is like this is the you know this is the very beginning. You know, we've mm-hmm. got you know, we have Charleston Business Group, Raleigh Business Group. You know, I'd, I I would love to you know, um, I have a Greenville Business Group and really just create this network of business network of the Carolinas and just uh, yeah. and even even beyond. But uh, who's the coolest person you've met inside us. of CBG? Me, not oh, him. Jeez, for sure. man. <laughs> um, I don't. That's a great question. I mean, I've met so many people. You could tell us at lunch. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you probably have a favorite and yeah. you just can't say it. Just <laughs> or like a top three. Give us a top three. There's don't, no, there's no correct even, answer. To and this. Don't even give them the order. Yeah. Just give them the top three. Man. Don't, don't, don't do top three. Who are some interesting individuals? You <laughs> That's the way you do it without getting in there trouble, dumbass. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Man. Um, That's the first time I said dumbass on air, by the way. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. So, well, so here's a story. So this was uh, Coca-Cola 600. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that a race? Uh, oh my yeah, God! Yeah. <laughs> At the motor speedway, yeah, back in May, back in May, yeah. So we, we find our way. I think it's the uh, I think it's the Pinnacle Club, or it's, it's the whatever mm-hmm. the rooftop bar or restaurant there yeah. in the infield, and mm-hmm. uh, meet to, uh, I think it's Toby Roberson, and he was basically uh, builds all of the uh, the pit crew uh, infrastructure or, or the buildings there on pit row. Oh yeah. And so it was just like you know, in travels, yeah, it was just was like, man, here I am meeting this guy that basically runs you know, the infield for NASCAR. And it's just like all from just, you know, just being there, being present. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, um, it's just, it was pretty, just pretty wild. And it was my first NASCAR race too. So, so was, he built the, he built how pit crews work or you know, just like the infrastructure of the, uh, the pit crew, I guess, buildings or whatnot. Oh, that's cool. And so it just was like, uh, I don't know, just pretty random, but I was just like, you know, it's pretty wild. Pretty, yeah. Wild introduction. Yeah. I, I He's love like the architect like of all the pit crews. Yeah. 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 I love, I love when you're just like next to somebody. Um, I, I remember I was at I was at the club and um, I was just you know I was just I talking smack for you. What I would have guessed this one for you. It's funny. What? Who do you you're, think I'm about to say? The coach. You're I am. Damn. Yeah. I knew it. Well, my story sucked then. No, apparently. no. He hasn't heard it. He hasn't heard it. <laughs> so I was I was just at a uh, well, I was at the Scarlet Charles City Club and um, I was just sitting there what? running my mouth talking smack like I do and um, and I was like and I'm looking over at this guy I'm like I know this guy from somewhere and I'm just like and we start like running our mouths or whatever and just being guys you know. And uh, it was Steve Wilkes, Coach Steve Wilkes from from the Panthers, now the Giants or whatever. But I mean, it was just and he probably said some obnoxious stuff. I'm sure. I'd, I'm sure I did. We'll talk. We'll talk yeah. about that lunch a little bit. But you know, <laughs> well, I, actually, I'll tell you what. I, th- this is my favorite. And uh, so because of CBG, I've got to know uh, Coach Biff Pochi. With he's the head coach of UNC Charlotte. Uh, UNC Charlotte. Yeah. And okay. so through Coach, I met Steve Wilkes as well. Yeah. Um, to uh, Speakeasy Cigar Club in Plaza. Mm-hmm. Cigar and, guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then also um, Todd Blackledge, who's an e- uh, announcer on ESPN. Mm-hmm. But it was just through that and all of, you know, um, you know, ha- you know, having great connections with the guys at, Ma- you know, McLaren. And oh, just, that's you know, cool. And so, yeah, so I, so I was helped. Like McLaren, like manufacturing or McLaren? Or the, or the race cars. Oh, okay, okay. Right, and so here we are, you know, here, you know, Coach is like, hey, listen, I'm looking for uh, you know, Rolls Royce for you know recruiting a, you, know, re- you know recruiting aspects and yeah. those things like that. So I was like, let me call, let me give my buddy Justin Flanning and a call at McLaren, see what I can line up. Next thing you know, coach is rolling into uh, you know practice in a you know oh. army army green you know Rolls Royce Ghost. Wow, oh, you know no. and it's just like, but to be able to just like connect people like that, and just you know and coach is just such a likable guy mm-hmm. and such a football guy that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I can't wait to see kind of what those guys do. You you have a very powerful entrepreneurial skill that you you keep like brushing across and not actually putting any emphasis on. The fact that you care so much about making these connections so that you can later connect people, yeah, that's intelligent. Like it's a very it's not no, most, people, most people skip that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so important. Just a couple people on this show have mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, it's like you know, if you can provide value, and it's hard, you know, and, and here's the. Not only can you provide the value, can you provide enough value to help someone else? Because yeah. they may need help, but it's like, do you really have the value or the connections or the resources mm-hmm. to even really help them? And it's yeah. like, and it's that doesn't happen overnight. And mm-hmm. so you have to have be extremely versatile mm-hmm. within your you know your network, you know your resources, yeah. uh, your time. And so it's and to just, do it without uh, anything in for you too. You have to just do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And that and, and like I said, that's kind of what. When I first started CBG, it's like I, I think I I built up. I was right around about I think like fifteen or twenty thousand followers on LinkedIn, and so that's kind of what gave me the confidence. It's like okay, that's what gave me the confidence to start CBG because I was like okay, I've got my I built kind of my own personal network, mm-hmm. and it got to the point where it's like even my own personal network. It's like I can only service so much, and I can just start helping passing business and helping other people out, and that's mm-hmm. kind of how the whole thing even just you know snowballed and whatnot. That's cool was though. that uh, yeah, just trying to provide value up front, and then whatever happens, uh, you know, on the way back, you know, yeah. I'm cool with it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know? well, that's a cool story, man. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah. the uh, you know, I, I agree with Christian 100 percent because we were talking about the Formula One race, and you know, most most people I think would be like, oh, Formula One, like that'll be so exciting or whatever. And then one of your knee jerk immediate first reactions was like, oh, I bet that's like 
that's you're going to be around good people to meet and network yeah. with and things oh, like that. So your, it's your brain I is think like that. Yeah. But on this trip, I hadn't thought about that yet. I don't know yeah. why I hadn't. Yeah, I haven't. Usually thought about I do. That. Usually I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually I'm very very effective like that. But this time I was just like I'm just going I'm just going out there and just enjoy. And I, I haven't thought like, about that at all. We're gonna be, sur- <laughs> yeah. we're gonna be surrounded by people that probably own like six or seven businesses. Oh, or gotta be. Family wealth out there. I can't wait. Oh my gosh. Just wanting to spend it somewhere. <laughs> Dude, count me. Like that's all. Well, it's easier. It, I know I, I said that. It's easier said than done because I am mm-hmm. such a sports fan, and it's just like sometimes I I can you know kind of lose focus yeah. and just be caught up in the, you know the event or you know the game or whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's just being intentional and just ha- like just that opportunity alone. It's just like man, just trying to maximize it, milk it, and um, but uh, yeah, definitely easier, especially after like a couple cocktails and just oh, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> Well, the F one race is in November. If you want yeah, to go, let's okay. go. Hey, let's go. Hey, I'm down. I'm always. I'm always down for a good race. So. Oh, I can't oh, wait. There we go. We got yeah, a third. Do you, do you have a team or a driver? Max. I, I vote for Max. I vote. Yeah, Max. Yeah. Is, Max. He, is solid. He kind of. I mean, had he, had he, had he not pulled for the guy? I mean, yeah. It's just like yeah. I don't even know my, who Max is. My all time Max for stopping was Red Bull, but um, oh, he, Bull. he roots for who I root, root for. So like when when I when I booked this trip or whatever. I was like, I was like, hey man, I'm rooting for Max. He's like, okay, I guess I will too. And so I ordered him a shirt, and I was like, you're wearing this. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what, that's that's what we're gonna. I, mean, do. I just don't know anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite Max Verstappen quote is uh, after he got wrecked by Landon Norris was back in the 2019 mm-hmm. season, but um, they interviewed him on 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 screen or whatever, and they're like, yeah, Max, how do you feel about that about him wrecking you like that? And he goes. Yeah, he's German. Yes, um, I don't really have much to say about that, other than that I think he was being a huge pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that straight up on live TV. On live no TV, way. I swear to God, I'm telling you the truth. <clears throat> and um, ever since then, I was like, love that guy. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a good reason to like him. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I mean, well, I that, that and he wins like every race. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> he's incredible. He's incredible. Um, I could talk about Formula One forever. Um, so, a true Charlottean, born and raised. Yeah. It's only it's only right that that you're uh, you have this great networking group in Charlotte. Um, tell us a little bit about Charlotte. You know, have you ever thought about moving away, or has it always been Charlotte, Charlotte, always and forever for you? And, and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, well, I mean, y'all being from Charlotte as well, yeah, it, it, it is pretty remarkable just to see kind of just the growth of the city. You know, over the last you know couple of decades, let alone the last. Five like, years, yeah, I would say five yeah. years, even like two, like two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, you know, I, I guess I, I've always felt myself as a, as a Charlotte guy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you know, it definitely uh, Charlotte's grown tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's taken some getting used. I mean, the traffic. You know, of course, mm-hmm. traffic's you know, drop of the pan con- considering you know Atlanta and DC, other you know, yeah, LA, larger, sure. yeah, larger metropolitan areas. But at the same time, it's like man, just getting used to it all. Yeah, and so it's just you know, and all the. Uh, the amenities, all the you know the luxuries that come with you know ha- you know being a larger city, but you know also like I said you know uh, the traffic, the crime, everything else. So it's sure. like, it's it, it's definitely um, multi you know multiple factors that come along with the, you yeah. know with with high growth in such a short I agree. amount of time. So. I, I love Charlotte because it's like the place that everybody like they just like underestimate it. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when they come here, like from a big city, you're like, oh, Charlotte's such a tiny city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you actually live here, you're in love with it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. there's so- always something to do downtown. There's Traffic's like way better than Atlanta, way mm-hmm. better than the other big cities, even though it is bad. Right. <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's better than all this stuff. You got Whitewater Center, yeah. the mm-hmm. only two of them in the United States yeah. like mm-hmm. that. Twenty minutes away. Yeah. The beach is three hours away. The mountains are an hour away. If yeah. you can call it mountains. Let's just say small hills. The hills. Uh, the hills are the hills are an hour away. Yeah. You literally have anything and everything you want in yeah. Charlotte. And people don't realize it because they land and they go, Oh, there's only fifteen buildings here. What do I do? When that I think Charlotte <laughs> Charlotte's in a special place, it's like I guess I don't know. I guess you can call Charlotte maybe like a mid city, but at the same time, it's like you know a lot of focus or nationally, you know, is on Charlotte and the growth of Charlotte, um, you know, as well as you know Raleigh as well. But it's like almost like you know, it's our time to enjoy this. I don't know if you call it spotlight, but just like this time of where we are as a city, yeah. mm-hmm. and it is special. It's like you know, there's tremendous opportunity. There, you know, everywhere you look, there's you know, it's growth opportunity, and so just like really just taking it all in, living in the moment, enjoying this because like. Charlotte's not going to be this, you know. It's not going to be number one it, forever, yeah. yeah. So it's just, you know, just taking it in, enjoying it, and um, you know, just hope Charlotte just doesn't get doesn't get kicked to the curb for yeah. you know, some other like up and coming city. You know, it's just like yeah. uh, Charlotte's done with. Like, hey, next. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, so just maintaining just kind of that position and you know working our way up to the top. So. 
Yeah, I mean, as I think as long as a lot of the the banking influences in Honeywell and things like that stay in town, like mm -hmm. I think that they'll continue to at least try to keep it nice. Yes. You know, um, and as we grow, it'll get better and better too. Because they said they call yeah. it a uh, the investors call it a B gate city, mm -hmm. where it's like it's not where you put your main money; it's where you put your leftover money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as soon as we grow to like a point where we're to that A gate city, yes, we start getting all the big money, the family money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so when we get to that point, we're gonna substantially grow. Yes. Yeah. All that goes to Atlanta, New York, yeah. San Francisco, yes. like yeah. bigger boys, Boston. What do you think? Just out of curiosity on that on that subject, um, and then I have an idea that I want to talk about. But um, what what do you think it's going to take for Charlotte to become like an A gate city? Man, um, I I think just time. Yeah, you know, it's I mean, if you think about how far Charlotte's grown in just such a short amount of time, it's like you can't expect for us to be to hit that level just instantaneously. I just think. We got to pay our dues, yeah. you know, just like, you know, and, and if you think about it just over the course of just like lifetimes and, you know, just how far these other older cities, how long it took them to get to where they are. It's like, really, this is like nothing compared to like where the way the trajectory that Charlotte's been on. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it would be nice to, you know, for our sporting franchises to be success <laughs> to be successful. I'm not going to lie. I mean, pain, I feel like pain, that, that pain, would, you know, I mean, I mean if, if we had all if we had the Hornets. You know, and, and, the, and, the, and the Panthers just humming. Have I mean, a winning you know, season. Have, yeah, just, <laughs> I haven't even heard about the basketball teams. Like nobody even talks about. I mean, Lamelo Ball got some got some you know hype, but I mean, he's just like, been, you don't you don't hear about it on social media at all. Yeah, like yeah. Panthers maybe. Yeah, and then but that's all about but that's I mean, if, if we I mean if, if the Hornets and the Panthers were your contenders annually, I mean yeah. that's that would just drive. So much. Don't forget FC, Agreed. man. FC can bring some. <laughs> I know I love that game. Can't, can't, can't forget about FC. You're absolutely right. I, yeah. I do love some FC games. They can produce sure. some. I think the games are the entertainment value of watching the games. He's like about making mad. The, he's about making mad. I know he's yeah. going to say it's better than football. You yeah. are uh, not right. Have you been to one? Have you been to one of the FC games? Oh, yeah. I got to get a, get a shout out to my buddy Matt Freeman yeah. with uh, Charlotte FC. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I've been to a few games. Yeah, sure. it's literally more fun because everybody's no, like it's amped up. It's like, it's like you're in a <laughs> People club. Are amped up. It's like you're in a club and it brings they stack you all together. At the football game, you're all sitting in the audience. You're like, whoa. <laughs> and that's what it is. Yeah. He has weaponizable like, ADHD, so he needs he needs like, I like constant. I like to be going. Yeah. yeah, he can't stand the time in between the plays. You know, he would yeah. you would like rugby. As many because in, in soccer, every time somebody trips, everybody yeah. freaks out. They trip like every three seconds, so it's very active. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. very active. Sport. Active. And, 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 and the clock's still running while the guys rolling around on yeah. the ground. So yeah. it's like bro, like the, the ball's out of bounds. That's, the clock's still running. Like, yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. I didn't realize how much it was a part of the culture though. Because every time somebody trips, they're like, oh. But then when our team trips, they're like, oh, why'd you do that? Right. You know, like you know. It's fake, but everybody's yeah. like freaking out. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, it's cool. that that's my and I like the FC games, um, but that's the thing that just drives me bonkers about it is all the flopping. It just drives me insane about yeah. it because and you can tie and not have a yeah. not have a winner. Oh yeah, yeah. the ties. Oh, <laughs> I think they should play until until score, like yeah. no matter what. But Period you know, score. we got a funny question for this guy. Uh, not yet. We're almost there. We're almost there. Um, this is my this is my networking idea, by the way. Okay. So oh. so oh. as a branch of CBG. We're gonna we're gonna uh, create a new one after this. We're gonna call it True Charlotteans Only. It has to be people that were born and raised here, type okay. of thing. Okay, and we're gonna be the elitist crowd, um, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna tell people how it really is. So, <laughs> True I, I, I feel like that group probably uh, uh, it'll just have us. It's just us. Okay, okay. It's just, <laughs> it's just yeah. the three of us. I, I, I think that's called the Good Old Boys. The Good Old uh, Boys. The Good yeah. Old Boys Network. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, <laughs> get canceled pretty quick. Oh, for yeah. sure. No kidding. Oh my goodness. Very good. Well, Robert, thank you so much for joining us today, man. It's been it's been a great show. Um, we like to sign off by by asking like a silly question or a funny thought inducing question. This is where I stall for time because it takes me time to come up with one, um, and I don't have any. So, yeah. um, do you have anything? I don't. I, we've asked them all the questions. Oh my god! Do you have a funny question We're for us? Do you have a funny question for us? Yeah, let's try it. Oh, uh, let's see here. We've never done this before. We've never done this. This is the first time. Let me. Okay, I have a. What, what's, a what's your what's your pet peeves? Him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was quick. That was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> No, Christian, he, Christian I, prides I, himself on good I, well, you, you know I teed him up on that question earlier, so, yeah. so he knew what was coming. Uh, softball. That was, that, so was, that was t ball. Okay, try again. Next next question. Uh, okay, go to uh, karaoke song. Oh, that's all. That's him all. Um, well, I just did oh, in Vegas a month ago. I just did um, "Living on a Prayer" by Bon Jovi. Impressive. Um, wow. So yeah, I don't. My pipes don't go that high, unfortunately. But I did a duo with a friend of mine who's she's she has a high voice. So we. And I'm not a singer, yeah. but if I had to be. It'd be stroking. 
<laughs> oh God. man! Yeah, stroke bring, bring, bringing it back. That's a good that one. Is, that, that, that is. is. Yeah, yeah. That's a story and a half. Like, we we played pull to that song, and it's hilarious. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that's completely piece. underrated. Oh like, yeah, more, more people need it. And if you can, if you can nail it, yeah. If you're jamming out, and then yeah. all of a sudden you change the stroke, and everybody's laughing. Yeah, and then yeah. you go back to normal music. Basically, it ruins the time. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That 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 you, you've got to tee that up for like 1:50 a.m. That's that's not that that's that is definitely not a. Uh, it is time to stroke. That, yeah, that, that is not a that is not, that is not a 9:30. That is not a 9:30 no. song. You're, although, you're throwing that sucker down at 1:50. Although if you do start that song at 9:30, like what kind of night are you gonna have over, after? Oh that? yeah, like, that's, that's right. I, yeah, completely. Yeah, that's yeah. another that's so, another angle. You can take. All right. You, so so you're not off the hook. What's your go-to karaoke song? Mm. Oh man. Um, I love guests. Let's good. see here. You want to guess? I, I have done guess his. Good I already t- guessed it. Oh, okay. you already, you already, what is? What do you got? I'm just kidding. I'm okay. Kidding. Oh, <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. <laughs> <I wish. laughs> uh, let's see here. I've done uh, Baby Got Back before. Hey. Hey. Sir, Sir Mix. No, you haven't. <laughs> Sir Mix a lot. That is Baby Epic. Got Back. If okay. how much am I going to have to pay you for a video of that? Is the uh, hey, we can we can make it happen. Wait, we're we're going right to. after this. Drinks yeah. at the City Club. Yeah, forget yeah forget <laughs> forget lunch. We're we're going straight to the karaoke lunch. Well, Robert, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, can't wait for lunch, and uh, I'll stay connected. You got it, brother. All Thanks. right, let's get full.